you hate the thought of working past 55 or 60? Do you hate not being able to live the life you deserve today? Do you hate not knowing what your financial future looks like? It's time to stop doing what you hate. Here's your host, Mr. Harold Green. Aloha, everybody. This is Harold Green of Bright Free Financial Group, and it is time to stop doing what you hate. How's everybody doing? I hope you are having a fantastic day. Uh, I'm excited because it's summertime and, uh, you know, here in Hawaii, we don't have daylight savings time. So it gets uh, light outside real early and then it um, takes quite a while to get dark now. And I'm excited about that because when I get done with work, there's still enough light to go out and play golf on the golf course or go to the beach or, you know, just enjoy the outdoors. And I think it's a really good time to get your fitness game on since we do have more time in the day. And uh, if you get your fitness game on, you'll start to feel better. You'll start to look better. And I'm extremely excited about that because I think I've lost about another five or six pounds. You know, I went and worked out with my trainer yesterday and uh, it was tough. He darn near had me gasping <laughs> for air. So I'm excited about, uh, you know, just working on the fitness game. All right. So I want to give a shout out to somebody. Her name is Sophia Hens, and she's one of my newer clients that just came on board. She was referred in. So, Sophia, thank you very much. Welcome aboard. And we're getting some stuff done. She came in with a lot of different things and a lot of things on her mind. And um, she's all excited about it as well. So she's she's been able to accomplish some pretty good things. But now that I'm on her team, we're going to be able to do some more exciting stuff. So I want to get into today's show. And the title of the show is Trade-Offs. That's right. Trade-Offs. And you guys have probably heard a lot about trade-offs and things like that, but the definition is simple. It's a balance achieved between two desirable but incompatible features, a compromise, a trade-off between objectivity and relevance, and it just kind of goes on from there. And I'm going to start by asking you a very simple question. What thing are things are you willing to give up in order to have everything in life that you ever wanted? What thing are things are you willing to give up in order to have everything in life that you ever wanted? This is a very important question because we're sitting here today in a world full of people who are unwilling to sit down and start the process of eliminating the things in their life that are keeping them stopping them from having everything they ever wanted. There's a fair amount of finger pointing going on and a fair amount of victimhood going on and a fair amount of, we can't do this because of the oppressor. I'm the oppressed. Get away from me with that. I can't stand it when people talk about that and they start making excuses as to why. They can't have everything in life that they ever wanted because it's somebody else's fault. And I'm going to say this very boldly. If I wrote a check for you or to you for everything that you ever wanted in life, I guarantee you within 90 days, you'll either lose it, give it away, have it taken away from you or whatever. Why? Because you don't know what it takes in order to obtain it. So therefore, you're not going to know what it takes to maintain it. I'm going to say that again. If you don't know what it takes to obtain something, you definitely are not going to know what it takes to maintain it. I'll give you an example. People say, Harold, man, you know, if I can just get a three, $4 million house, that's my dream. Well, here in Hawaii, your property taxes are <laughs> 16, 17, $18,000 a year, just the property tax. We're not even talking about the insurance, the flood insurance, and all of that kind of stuff. But again, let's go back to trade-offs. And let's talk about some things that you may need to trade off in order to have everything that you ever wanted. And I'll, I'll start with myself. Uh, my wife and I, we got married real young. I think I was 20 years old <laughs> when we got married, had my first kid when I was 21. So it was kind of like a kid raising kids. you know. And, and today, you, you look at a 21-year-old having the first kid, a lot of a lot of 30-year-olds are still living at home for whatever various different reason. Times are different. I'm not, you know, bagging on nobody or nothing like that. But the time we grew up in was extremely different, sometimes very difficult. 
So my wife and I had to make a decision when I got out of the military, where were we going to live? And one of the biggest decisions we made was there were things about our families that we didn't quite like. Things about the areas where we grew up that we, we didn't quite like. And what we wanted was we wanted the autonomy to be able to raise our kids the way that we saw fit. So we knew that <laughs> our nieces and nephews, I mean, we love our families. Do not get me wrong. It's just that we didn't want for our kids what we saw happening in our families' lives and our nieces and nephews and different things like that. We wanted something totally different. And we didn't want the input of our parents, you know, and, and I'm going to say this today in order to send a kid to preschool or whatever, it costs about a thousand to two thousand dollars a month, depending on where you live. So I see a lot of people wanting to live by their 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 mom, their dad, their their in-laws, or or whatever, so they can have help with babysitting kids. Now, you're giving up a lot for you know to save a thousand to two thousand dollars a month. You're giving up a lot, especially if your parents and or your in-laws have a difference of values in regards to what they believe and their mindset and what and what you believe and what you want for your kids. A lot of people do not understand. That is going to play big time in your kids' lives when they grew up. So we didn't we didn't have help from our families like that. We didn't, you know, we didn't have the help of our my mom or anybody like that because we didn't have anybody living around us. Here in Hawaii, we had we had nobody but us. We had to figure out what we were going to do. So we traded off living by our families so that we can raise our kids the way that we saw fit. You know, we didn't have them coming over, giving our kids candy or giving them money, different things like that. So we were free, but we also struggled tremendously. And I'm extremely happy to say that we've raised our kids the best way we knew how, but the results are astonishing. People say, Harold, your kids are super smart. You know, they must have been born smart. And I was telling somebody yesterday, I said, no, no, we made them like that. There are things that you can do to, to train your child up in the way that they should go. You know, what time they go to bed, what you feed them, things like that. So that was a very big trade-off. Yes, did I miss my, my mom or whatnot? Yes, I did. But also, I had to look at where the job opportunities were for me. Where could I be successful? I knew that growing up in a small rural town, it's not a lot to do down there. As far as jobs are concerned, you work for the city, the county, if you can get a job there, you know, or you work odd and in jobs, you work fast food, or you, you work the hotel industry, you know, or you work at the chicken factory, the lumber yard, or whatever. And as a kid, that's not what I wanted for my life. I saw myself traveling the world, going different places, doing different things. And so I ended up joining the military, which was a big trade off for me because it meant I wasn't going to be able to see my family as often as I wanted to. But that was a very big trade off that I had to make. What about the way you think right now? What are what are some of the ideas that you have in your head about money that you're going to have to change and, and trade off a different mindset? For me, it was buying a car versus leasing a car. You know, I had to have a trade off in my mindset, regardless of what everybody else was saying. I had to do what was right for me and what made sense for me. You know, instead of going out there and having to do, do car repairs all the time or whatever it was, I had to give up that mindset of buying a used car and saving money because. It was wasting me money. All the used cars I bought just to save money, you know, how many times did I end up in the car repair shop or whatever it might be? Wasting time. $375 an hour gone just because I, I needed to go and take the car to the shop. Like you really have to look at your time value of money. What is your time worth? What is one hour in one day of your time worth? And think about that. If you're sitting down watching TV or whatever it might be, what is that one hour costing you to watch TV? Don't say it's free. There is no such thing as free. Everything is going to cost you something. And therefore, we need to start looking at what are the things that we need to trade off in order to have everything that we ever wanted? What about your belief system? What is it that you believe about money right now that you're going to need to change in order to have everything you ever wanted? I've had conversations with people that would not come on board and work with me just because of fees, right? Just because of fees and their belief system that, oh, you shouldn't pay anybody fees to, to invest your money, or you shouldn't have to pay anybody fees, you know, to, to get financial planning done. 
I mean, if, if you're sitting here listening to me right now and you're already a client, I greatly appreciate you because you've already overcome that mindset of, hey, you know, I got to pay her all fees. You know, some people had that mindset when they came in. But if I'm not showing you tremendous value, get rid of me or tell me, Harold, you know, this is not working out. You're not doing what I thought we were going to do. Just just let me know. But I've met with people who they, when it comes to paying fees, it's kind of like their arms can't reach their wallet to, to pull out a credit card to, or to, to write a check because they just, they can't see it, right? Sometimes people think they know everything or they can look on the internet and find enough out in order to make things work. You can, you're going to get by with that for only so long. Okay, you're going to get to a point where you're going to need somebody's help. You're going to need somebody's wisdom. You're going to need somebody's expertise, especially if you're trying to accomplish and achieve all the things in life that you ever wanted. We're talking about trade-offs here. I want to give you a story about Moses. And you guys probably have heard the story about Moses when he came out of Egypt and he was leading the Israelites and thousands upon thousands of people out there in the desert and you know, they didn't have anything to eat. So God, he made it rain manna from heaven, like bread. It was like this moist bread full of protein and nutrients. It had like everything that they needed. Right. And so after a while, people kind of got tired of eating that and they started to rebel and to, to rail against God. And it's like, God, we're tired of eating this, this manna. You know, we have to go out and collect it every single day. And you couldn't have any left over because if you left it over that night, it will spoil. <laughs> it will spoil. That was, that was that was tough. So they started complaining and say, God, we want meat. We want we want meat. And so he made quail come down. And the story goes on as they were eating the quail. You know, they they died eating the meat, you know, because they simply rebelled against God. And so, you know, Moses had to lead these people into the land that God had prepared for them. You know, the land of Canaan. It was it was where he wanted them to be. It was where it was where everything they ever wanted in life was. And so he sent out spies to go out and spy the land out and to come back and give them, give them a report. So he sent out 12, I believe, and then 10 came back with a negative report and only two came back with a, a positive report. 10 had a negative mindset. Well, two had a growth mindset, Caleb and Joshua. Very, very interesting story. If you guys have time, go back and read it. And so when he sent the spies out to spy out the land, you know, they saw all of the good stuff in the land. So have you guys ever done that? Have you ever went and spied out where you would potentially want to live one day? Like just, just off the cuff, like dreaming, right? Driving through neighborhoods. My wife and I used to do that all the time. When we were broke, we, we would go do open houses and million dollar homes. And we, we was like barely able to pay our rent. But we, we, were, we were trying to trade off the idea that we couldn't have anything for an idea that, hey, this stuff exists for a reason. Somebody lives in it. Somebody can afford it. I mean, I tell you, we were coupon clipping, going from one grocery store to the other. But we we had to make a trade-off decision. And that was me quitting my job at a stable job and starting my own business. I had to trade off the security and comfort of a paycheck in order to have everything that we ever wanted. And we went to see this place one day and it was a nice condo. And I think I might've told the story before, but we had to put down a deposit and then we had to come up with the other money. And I was looking at my wife and I said, honey, my job is the job I have right now. It's never going to allow me to to obtain anything like this and even maintain it. So we had to make the decision to quit that job of safety and security in order to have everything, be able to work towards everything that I ever wanted. Yeah, it was hard. I went through a lot of hell because there's giants in the land. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say that again. There are giants in the land. Anywhere you want to get to where there's massive success, there's giants on the way and you're going to have to overcome these Giants. So two of the spies came back to Moses and said, Hey, we can take them. We can take them. They had the mindset of faith. They believed. They believed because they had already gone through so much stuff and God had already done so much for them already. All they had to do is believe. And it's the same thing with you. Spy out the land, get magazines, subscribe to magazines that have wealth in it, just so like you can look at that and have that in your mind instead of saying it's vanity, it's vanity, it's vanity, it's vanity. You have to change your belief system, and that is going to be a massive trade-off. Another thing you have to do in order to have everything that you want is you have to create an action plan. So many people are used to winging it, flying by the seat of their pants. They have no action plan. You must create an action plan to help you get from where you are today to where you want to be. Like, what is it am I going to do? 
you know, am I going to start looking for another job or am I going to go back to school and, and get my master's or am I going to work on a PhD? You know, even if I have to take loans for that, is it is it worth doing, right? You're trading off the comfort and safety of where you are today in order to have everything you ever wanted. You're going to have to take risk, but they're going to have to be calculated risk. And the other thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get the right people on your team that believe along with you. You can't be running around with people that are jealous of you and your ideas and what it is that you want in life. Like Joseph. Joseph was thrown in a pit. Story in the Bible. He he shared his dream with his brothers. And you know what they did? They got jealous of him. They threw him in a pit and they left him to die. That's a sad story. But in the end, what happened was Joseph was taken into captivity, became a slave, worked his way up, was accused of all kinds of stupid stuff, giants in the land again. And then he rose to like second in command. And when there was a famine in that land, his family came looking for food, but they didn't know it was Joseph that they traded into slavery. And he was able to reveal himself to his family and take care of them. Now, I don't get to see my mom as often as I want to for whatever different reasons, but because I decided to live in an area or go away from my family, I was able to amass a certain level of success for myself so that when I have to, or when time permits itself, I can go back and see my mom at any, at any time, whenever, whenever the time is available for me to do that. I don't have to worry about, sorry, mom, I can't see you because I don't, I ain't got no money. I ain't got no money. That's a sad situation to be in is I ain't got no money. So if you're out there and you're listening to me, or you're a client and you're listening to me and you have friends and family that you know, you want them to benefit from what you've been able to benefit from, please refer them in. And and I want to sit down with them and I want to go through a process with them and show them what it is that they need to do in order to have everything they ever wanted in life. So go out there, spy out the land, and then make a list of trade-offs. What am I going to have to give up in order to get everything I want? Am I going to have to give up playing games on my phone? Am I going to have to give up watching Real Housewives of whatever? Am I going to have to give up just, you know, parking myself in front of the TV? If you want to have a healthy lifestyle, what is it that you're going to have to give up? You know, trade-offs. You know, do I have to give up eating French fries every day or whatever it might be? We're talking about trade-offs because you're not going to be able to get there doing the same things that you're doing right now. That's not going to happen. That's the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, hoping for a different result. That is insane. So let's get off the insane train and start to work our way to having everything that we ever wanted in life. And you can do that if you're not a client by giving me a call at 808-521-4401. Halo will get you on the schedule. We'll go through the rapid retire process and checklist, figure out what it is that you're going to need to do and help you create an action plan so that you can get off and running ASAP. So thanks a lot for allowing me to share with you guys today, this show. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this show trade-offs. All right. So until next time, everybody, one, two, three, let's get it. This is the podcastfactory.com.